Hi, this is Mike Duffy for Backcountry Access and Avalanche1.com. Today I'm going to talk about some avalanche safety gear that we use when snowmobiling and some procedures that we use for snowmobiling uh, and some techniques we'll learn that are specific to snowmobiling that you won't learn in your typical avalanche class. The gear we'll ca carry with us every time we go in the backcountry we have four things, a beacon, a shovel, and a probe, and then an avalanche airbag pack. With the beacon, it's underneath my outermost layer. It's positioned, not up here, it's positioned above my belt line off to the side. The reason I keep it right here is if I have position near my sternum, if I hit the handlebars, I can put the beacon into my chest. Down here, I'll take it in the stomach, I won't break any ribs. The face of the beacon is against my body. The beacon also has a tether. This is easily accessed by removing a clip. When I'm searching, I have it on a tether. If I drop the beacon, it's still attached to me. In addition to checking the battery strength on my beacon, before I go riding, I want to check my avalanche airbag pack. I want to check the connections. I want to make sure that the trigger nut is attached and the trigger nut is underneath this housing. It needs to be attached or the airbag cannot deploy. Make sure that's attached, the outer housing is attached and screwed in tight and then we have the air hose, quick coupling connector. We want to check that. You can pull on it but we also have this gauge. When it can fit right there it's connected but I also pull on it to see. Next thing I check is I want to check the gauge. The air pressure gauge on the canister. I want the needle to be in the green. And when it's in the green, it's between 2500 and 2700 PSI. Once I've checked those, I'm ready to ride. Besides having a beacon on me, I have three other things. I have a shovel and a probe. The shovel and the probe are in the back of the pack. Now, if I get my sled stuck on a hillside, an avalanche train, or I'm at the bottom of the hill, and I have an avalanche slope above me, do I really want to take off the pack to get at the shovel? No. In snowmobiling, when we have an airbag pack, we actually carry two shovels. One in the pack, in case we get separated from the snowmobile, we can still perform a rescue, but I have two shovels. Second one is in my tunnel bag. I use a shovel that's shaped like a hoe, and this is the BCA uh, D2 EXT, called the dozer works really well because you don't have to lift snow. You just pull the snow out of the way. It makes it much easier. I keep the pack on. If I'm stuck on a hillside, the avalanche danger is up. I'm looking up the hill, I'm shoveling, and I still have the airbag with me, attached to me, and I can deploy it. A couple of things I want to do with my airbag pack. Before I leave the trailhead, I want to make sure the trigger handle is on the outside. Adjust the airbag pack so it fits your body well. I have a sternum strap, but keeping this snug, the shoulder straps don't fall off when I'm side hilling. You have a waist buckle, you also have a leg strap. The leg strap is very important. It goes around the back, over the buckle, and then you connect it. If I'm not wearing the leg strap and I get caught in an avalanche, what can happen is if the avalanche forces my arms over my head, this pack can come off my body or put the sternum strap right at my neck. So a leg strap doesn't have to be super tight. It has to keep the airbag pack from rising up. So I'm adjusted. I adjust the waist belt, and that way the pack works as an extension of my body. When I'm riding with the float airbag pack, if I see an avalanche coming, I can get on the throttle, reach across, and with my left hand, I can pull the handle. Very easy handle to find. All I do is pull straight down. Before we leave the trailhead, we want to check to see if the beacon works properly. We want to also check the range of the beacon. So we do a function test and a range test. With the function test, we'll get everybody together in a small group. We're going to turn our beacons on, figure out what the battery strength is, and then we want to check the function of the beacon. We'll have one person keep their beacon on transmit. Everybody else switches to search. They're going to walk away from the person who's transmitting, and they keep walking until they no longer pick up that person. They pull a 180, then they start walking towards the person, 
when they pick up the signal, they raise their hand. Now everybody knows the range of their beacon. Once they've done that, everybody switches to transmit. The person was on transmit switches the search and everybody walks towards that person and past that person. You want to spread yourselves out so we're not getting a group of beacons. You can also do this range test on your snowmobile. You can have someone go up the trail, switch their beacon to search, and then as a, you jump on your snowmobile in the transmit mode and you head up the trail and you can space out all the snowmobilers about 20 sled lengths apart and the person on the side of the trail with their sled off is seeing if everybody driving by is transmitting. Every day before I go riding, there's a few things I do. I want to check what the avalanche report is. Stability is determined, snow stability is determined by checking the avalanche report. I can get an app from my phone. Uh, I can go to a website, check what the avalanche report is for the area I'm riding in. In the United States, it's avalanche.org. In the Canada, it's avalanche.ca. BCA also has an app that you can check. Check the avalanche report. Get a good indication of what the conditions are out there. Alter your riding according to the danger. And then when I'm out there riding, I'm observing. I'm looking for recent avalanches, how much recent snowfall we've received, what the wind's doing, seeing if I'm getting any cracking or woomping. Rapid warming, rapid change in weather is also is a contributing factor. And then what I'm doing is I'm doing stability tests. And there's stability tests that I can do on my snowmobile. Every day you go riding, you don't want to hit the biggest hill to start with because if you misjudge the stability, the consequences are huge. So in snowmobiling, we do a progression. We're going to start on the low angle, or we're going to start in the thick trees, and they have to be evergreen trees, and then if it's stable there, we'll possibly think of upping the steepness, okay? I do stability tests on my snowmobile. I can do some slope cuts. I can stop the sled, jump up and down the running boards to see if we're getting any collapsing. But the most important thing is to do a progression while you're riding. Start low angle. If the stability allows, then start ramping it up. If you see some instability, start lowering the angle. The stability can change with elevation, different aspects. It can be stable in one area, go around to the other side, because of a different aspect, the way the wind's been blowing the snow, it can be completely different avalanche conditions. So be cautious, always be observing, and be doing stability testing throughout the day. Before I hit, climb a hill, come down a hill, I think of the consequences. If this avalanche is right now, where's it going to take me? Is it going to take me into a stand of trees? Is it going to take me off a cliff, into a V-shaped gully? Even a small avalanche going into a V-shaped gully, the snow is going to pile up very deep and it'll make for a tougher rescue. Avalanches can go over 100 miles an hour. Even a small avalanche can go 40, 50, 60 miles an hour. If I get taken into the trees at 60 miles an hour, it's very tough to survive. So before I pick a hill, I look at the consequences. If I don't like the consequences, I'm going to pick another hill. There's never a day I don't go snowmobiling, but every day I do go snowmobiling, where I go is determined by the avalanche report, the stability, tests that I do, and by observing. Some days you keep it low angle all day. We can still have a good time if we're out in the meadows in the deep powder. So here's uh, five tips for riding in the backcountry. One is only one person on the hill at a time. That way you don't have multiple burials. Number two is never go above your partner. No two people on the hill at the same time. If someone gets stuck, don't go above them. Don't go up to help them. You may trigger an avalanche that will take out multiple people. If you're at the bottom of the hill, don't park in close. You don't want to be in the runout zone. You want to be well away in an island of safety. Three is have a plan. Who's first on the hill? Who's last? What slope are you hitting? Where are you stopping? And what's your escape route if it does avalanche? With a snowbiller, you need to have an escape route for going up and also coming down. Communication comes in real handy and getting this information out. I'm using a BC link by Backcountry Access. Microphone's right here, it's a radio. I can talk to the other riders. If someone's coming down the hill, it's avalanching behind them, I can warn them. Number four is stay in voice or visual contact. If someone goes out of view and they trigger an avalanche, you really don't know what has happened. 
Number five is alter your riding according to the danger. Never have a preconceived plan of what hills you're going to take. When you're out there riding, you determine what is stable to climb. Thanks for watching the video. This is just an introduction to traveling in the backcountry on a snowmobile. There's a lot more involved. I highly recommend taking a snowmobile specific avalanche class. Who you go with is also very important. What if you get buried? Who's going to help you? Do your riding partners have training? Are they proficient with their gear? You have to do more than just wearing a beacon on your body. Take a snowmobile specific avalanche class, keep learning, practice your skills, practice with your beacon, it'll increase your odds tremendously. Remember, these instructional videos are no substitute for an avalanche class. For more educational videos and research, check out backcountryaccess.com slash education.